Tonight, President Obama wants the FCC to reclassify the internet. AT&T is ditching in-flight Wi-Fi plans. And a major security flaw uncovered in iOS. Yes, another. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 212 for Monday, November 10th, 2014. This episode is brought to you by ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes hiring faster, easier, and cheaper. Post your job to over 50 job boards with just one click. Try ZipRecruiter for a free four-day trial now at ZipRecruiter.com slash TN2. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash TN and the number two. Hello, everyone, and happy Monday. I'm Sarah Lane. Let's get right into our top story, big story on the Internet today. Joining us to talk about it is Addie Robertson, reporter over at The Verge. Hello, Addie. Hi. So you wrote an article today called What Can Obama Really Do for Net Neutrality? So for anybody who's maybe even, you know, they're a little bit behind, what is President Obama's stance on net neutrality and how might it change because of it? Um, so Obama's always more or less said that he is for net neutrality, but today his new statement is that he supports what's called Title II reclassification, um, which is reclassifying broadband service under this sort of common carrier rules that are more like what telephone companies do. Um, this is considered more or less the thing that you'd have to do to make net neutrality stand up in court, um, but it's something that's been very controversial among uh, cell, phone, like cell phone companies and cable companies. Now, the president cited over 4 million pre-net neutrality comments. It's, of course, your public public comments. This is a really hot-button issue, uh, especially for you know people like us who kind of work on the Internet. But this is something that, that affects everybody. So what is this proposal that President Obama has made, and who does he have to convince? Uh, you know, at this time, you, you, you kind of have the sitting duck presidency. You know, is he... How much does he actually get to say how Congress will act? Um, so, I mean, his plan is a sort of four-point plan that's not incredibly different to what other people have been suggesting. Um, it basically says you can't block services, you can't throttle or slow down services, you can't, um, you have to have transparency, uh, so you have to let people know what's going on with all parts of the internet, and it's possible that they will apply net neutrality regulations to what's actually not no, not the last mile to direct connections between services and ISPs, which is what sort of Netflix has been fighting about. Mm -hmm. um, and the fourth thing is really the thing people are up, are been protesting, which is what's called fast lanes, which is that you'd be able to pay for prioritized access. Um, so the main thing is that he really is just providing political cover. Mm -hmm. um, he's saying, okay, if you do this and you're the FCC, I'm going to back you. And if you're in Congress and you're trying to put through a bill that's going to strip the FCC's powers to regulate net neutrality, I'm going to veto it. You know, there have been a lot of comments, at least that I've read, uh, from you know people who, who's, who, who are extremely interested in net neutrality and, and I want the best for, for citizens that say, you know, that last mile of internet uh, uh, bandwidth People confuse that with just the internet in general. Uh, how, why do you think that the net neutrality issue has been so difficult to kind of come up with an agreement on, you know, in our political system? Do you think that, and I, I, I suspect, it's just, it's so complicated that we are trusting lawmakers who don't necessarily have the concept wrapped around their heads clearly enough. Really sorry, the internet cut out for just a second. Oh, um, <laughs> it's probably, it's probably just as well because I couldn't get yeah. my sentence out either. I guess my, my question is, we've got this last mile issue and then there's this whole, are we reclassifying the internet issue? It seems to me that the more you've got people who are who are making these laws um, and, and sometimes there are public statements that are made, you mm -hmm. think, are we really trusting the right people to make the rules for us? Because sometimes the concept seems a little bit out of their grasp. And I'm not specifically talking about anybody. I'm saying in general, net neutrality seems difficult as a concept, uh, even for the people who have to decide how it works. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a difficult concept for, honestly, a lot of people who are in tech, too. Um, that's what sort of the Netflix issue has been, that what Netflix is calling for 
hasn't ever really been considered part of net neutrality um, up until now, which is very interesting. Um, I think the way that this has sort of been thought, though, is that you can compare it to really basic ideas, which is our internet companies like dump pipes? Are they things that you just want to send data across? Or are they things that we want to be actively shaping what we see? Well, at this point, we've got President Obama weighing in. Uh, you know, what's next? Uh, how much uh, power does Congress have over this? Is it up to the FCC? What's the next step? Um, so in the short term, it's up to the FCC. They had originally said that they wanted to come up with a net neutrality plan by the end of this year. Um, that's increasingly not seeming like it's going to happen. Um, today, they confirmed that they're sort of looking at a number of proposals, including one that would kind of do half of what President Obama wants, um, but sort of leave some elements of the Internet out of that. Um, so it really sounds like we're going to be looking for a decision maybe early next year. Um, and then meanwhile, Congress, at this point, what's probably going to happen after the midterms is that Republicans are going to revitalize their efforts to strip net neutrality power. Um, there have been a bunch of bills circulated in the last couple of years. Um, I'm reading that they're trying to come up with a, a whole sort of Telecommunications Act overhaul. Addy Robertson writes for The Verge and joins us on TN2 to give us a little bit more perspective on what is going on with net neutrality. Thanks for joining us, Addy. And before we let you go, remind people where they can keep up with your work. Uh, I write for TheVerge.com. That's D as in Victor. <laughs> Thanks so much, Addy. Mm -hmm. All right, on to some other stories in our news feed this week. Today, in fact, AT&T has abandoned its in-flight wireless initiative for airlines before, before it even got off the ground. See what I did there? Earlier this year, AT&T had announced that it planned to bring high-speed 4G LTE wireless service to flights as soon as next year through a partnership with Honeywell. Well, now the company says instead it wants to devote its resources to expanding its international presence through deals, which include the $2.5 billion offer to acquire Mexican wireless company Eusacel. Talked about that last Friday. The company is also planning a $48.5 billion acquisition of DirecTV, which would allow AT&T to offer consumers a bundle of services like pay TV and broadband internet and wireless service. So AT&T says... You know, you plain users are just not our priority at this point. Last week, we passed along reports that Mac and iOS users in China were targets of a new malware called WireLurker. It was a little bit confusing. It was actually able to infiltrate systems starting on a Mac, but then go to iOS, which is pretty new. Apple confirmed the security issue and then blocked the affected malware apps. Now, mobile security research firm FireEye reports that it's found a major iOS security flaw different one called mask attack that's m-a-s-q-u-e attack that exists because ios doesn't enforce matching certificates for apps with the same bundle identifier uh described it another way fire eye claims that mask attacks can replace authentic apps like banking and email apps using attackers malware through the internet so that means the attacker can steal users banking credentials by replacing an authentic banking app with a malware app that has an identical ui so say you know my bank is bank of america maybe it was you know, Bank of Americas, that sort of thing that's designed to confuse users. FireEye also claims that it notified Apple about this vulnerability, which affects both non-jailbroken and jailbroken devices running either iOS 7.1.1 through iOS 8.1.1 beta back on July 26th. So that was quite some time ago. Chinese government hackers are suspected of breaching the computer networks of the U.S. Postal Service, compromising the data of more than 800 thousand employees, including the Postmaster Generals. Officials speaking off the record to the Washington Post say that the intrusion was discovered in mid-September and that the FBI is leading the investigation into the attack. The Chinese government has repeatedly denied accusations that it engages in cyber theft, but the country has been tied to several recent intrusions, including one in the computer systems of the Office of Personnel Management and another into the systems of a government contractor, USIS, that conducts security cl clearance checks. The compromised data included names, dates of birth, social security numbers, addresses, dates of employment, and other information, but no customer credit card information from post offices or online purchases at USPS.com appear to have been breached. Coming up in just a few, Instagram's finally letting you edit captions. Your life is good again. And how soon robots could be smarter than humans. Spoiler, not very long at all. But first, are you hiring for your company? 
I hope so. Let's grow. Do you know where to post your job, though, to find the best candidates? That's the tough. You want the best candidates if you're going to be expanding, right? That's why you'll love ZipRecruiter. It not only lets you post to over 50 job boards, but they also have a really nice, well-stocked resume database. You can search over 4 million resumes, thousands of new ones added daily. <laughs> You don't even have to search every day. ZipRecruiter can send you resume alerts when new candidates match your search. You can find candidates in any city, industry, nationwide. You can post post once and then just watch all of those candidates roll in because ZipRecruiter has an easy-to-use interface that does a lot of the organization for you. And when you've got that potential candidate, you're really feeling good about it. ZipRecruiter makes it easy to review them. And you can find out today why ZipRecruiter has been used by over 250,000 businesses because they're great. People love ZipRecruiter. Right now, viewers and listeners of TN2 can try ZipRecruiter for a free four-day trial. Go to ZipRecruiter.com slash TN2. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash TN and the number two. And we thank ZipRecruiter for the support of Tech News Tonight. On to a couple more stories we're following today. Facebook has announced more than 500 million people are now using Messenger. That's the company's standalone app to send private messages to friends on a monthly basis. That's 500 million million people on a monthly basis so it's not like they downloaded it once and then never came back back in april facebook told everybody that it was going to start forcing us to download the separate app if we didn't have it already for mobile users to send those private messages that went into effect by august now a lot of facebook users felt upset by that but if you look at these numbers it doesn't look like it's slowing down the adoption rate too much if almost half of facebook users use messenger at least once per month Seems like kind of a win for the company. Facebook also owns WhatsApp, which has more than 600 million users worldwide. You know who Facebook also owns? Instagram, which got an update to its mobile app with two new features today, caption editing and a people tab. Users can now go back and edit captions on posts, which actually includes location as well. Instagram says that this has been one of the top requests we've heard from the community. You know, I never actually complained about it too much, but it was really annoying not to be able to edit a caption, so I'm, I'm happy. Like a Facebook post, the word edited will appear above modified captions. That's only visible when users tap to see the comments for a post, but something to keep in mind. The Explore page on Instagram has also gained a new Explore icon at the bottom of the screen, which is now a magnifying glass that splits into two tabs, photos and people that a user may want to follow based on who they're already following and their Instagram activity. Google has agreed to lease Bay Area-based airfield Moffett Field from NASA for the next 60 years. As part of the lease, Google will take over operations of the airfield while U.S. government retains ownership of the land. In a press release, NASA announced that Planetary Ventures LLC, which is a, a shell organization operated by Google for real estate, will contribute $1.16 billion over the course of the lease, 60-year lease, while reducing the government agency's maintenance and operation costs by $6.3 million annually. NASA and the U.S. General Services Administration, or GSA, will continue to own the 1,000 acres of land in Mountain View, California, which includes hangars 1, 2, and 3, an airfield flight operations building, two runways, and a private golf course. Finally, let's check in with the robots who are going to ruin our lives eventually. And I mean, like right around the corner. Nick Bostrom, who's the director of the Future of Humanity Institute at Oxford University, has laid out the best predictions of the artificial intelligence research community in a new book that he wrote called Superintelligence, Paths, Dangers, Strategies. Now, there's a lot of information in here, but some of it includes threatened jobs with routine tasks that are getting digitized. For example, farmers, telemarketers, stock traders, loan officers, lawyers, and even journalists. No, please don't take my job. Computers are also improving at an exponential rate. For example, Bostrom's book cites chess as a machine skill that's already superhuman. Uh, we know that uh, inventor and Tesla CEO Elon Musk recently warned that super intelligent machines are possibly the greatest ex ex existential threat to humanity. He also says the investments he's made in artificial intelligence companies are really to just keep an eye on where the field is going. And then, of course, many scientists devoted to the evolving technology of robot and what's possible are predicting the end of human intellectual supremacy by possibly mid-century, which is, hey, I mean, it's almost 2015. We don't have much time now, people, so live it up. That's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. That was terrible advice, by the way. I don't know. Let's figure out how to 
stay supreme over the robots. You can subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. You can write us at TN2 at twit.tv. And of course, you can watch live every day, 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Don't miss Tech News today. That's our morning program tomorrow and every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Sarah Lane. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.